Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom and become the rock star agent in your market. And holy cow, we've got a couple of rock stars with us today. Uh, our main guest is Hank Avink, and we're going to be talking about how to finish out the year strong, how to schedule out your week, and then how to really stick with those time blocks so you actually get accomplish what you set out to accomplish and make progress to, towards your goals. We're going to talk about how to finish out 2017 strong, how to set yourself up to hit the ground running in 2018 and really get where you want to go. And then of course we have Gene, big Gene, the evil bald ninja, the Vulpinator is with us as well. He's got a, a social social media and or tech tip. Uh, so we've got all kinds of stuff to uh, to cover today with you. So first of all, my, uh, my co-pilot, my uh, co-partner in all things real estate crime related and uh, well, all that stuff. Greg McDaniel, what's up today? What up, Playboy? Dude, I'm pumped to have Hank. Is Hank drinking a beer? That bastard, he's drinking a beer and he's muted so he can't say anything. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I got I to gotta, I gotta tell a funny story, Matt. Uh, oh, Corona light. Oh, wow. my mouth is watering. Oh. Uh, but anyways, um, the taste, I, I am confined to the to the water, you know, jail over here. Matt's drinking mm -hmm. vodka. Um, but, <laughs> oh, really? really? <laughs> but, okay. So when Matt, when I, when you and I were speaking down at CAR, I uh, <laughs> I told you this after we, after we did our session together, and I kept on nosing people, kind of glanced down at my nuts. And I'm like, what is going on here? I'm like, I thought they were just a bunch of crotch watchers. No, no. I gave a speech in front of a hundred plus people with my zipper completely down. And I figured that out after we got done. I'm like, what the hell's going on? I'm like, oh, whoops. Oh, thank so, God you had a long dress shirt on. Oh, it would have been, uh, well, at least I was wearing Lucky Brand jeans. So it just, all it says is Lucky <laughs> right there on the inside. And then it's the sign that says, fuck it. <laughs> That's the greatest t-shirt ever. All right. Um, we've got so many things to talk about, so let's not delay any further. First of all, Hank, Hank Avink, Hank the Tank, whatever you want to call him, National uh, Coaching League, 36 to life, uh, one of our favorite people in the world. Hank, how are you? Oh, this is my last call of the weekend. we got friends coming in, so I am starting early, and yes, I'm going to have a beer because I am now off the clock. <laughs> so jealous of you. Uh, Gosh. <laughs> I, I just love it that you consider doing a show with us being off the clock. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Love Dude. it. All right. So uh, for the first, so for, for anybody that may have not caught your last uh, couple of episodes with us over the last, I think, year and a half, uh, just give us the brief kind of 60 second bio, who you are, where you are, what you do. My name is Hank the Tank, and here's what I'm about. I'm about pushing against the grain, meaning you don't have to be bigger and badder and go grow teams. I want you to be profitable, which this is this is how I rate things. Let me see your p and 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 see what kind of money you're actually making. I can give a shit about your production. It's how much you're keeping. Second thing I want to do is I want to talk to your family members and see if you're actually having a life or if you're just a douchebag that works all the time and you think you're big and bad because you got all these awards that your life sucks. <laughs> so who am I? I'm about pushing against like, you don't have to grow big. How about we grow smart? How about we be consistent? And how about we actually like pay our taxes and, and have a PL and l and have something that we actually enjoy doing, then running from things and trying to build a team because you're running from doing the actual work and you want to go seventh level, which anyways. So yeah, I'm all fired up today. Which one of those topics do you want to plug into? Oh man, well we've got we've got three or four of them. We could go all a day on that. Goodness. All right, and then uh, Gene is with us from the car, the evil bald ninja himself. Gene, how are you? Come on, don't mute yourself. Unmute yourself. Come on. Um, there we go. Can you hear me? We can hear you. I thought I was muting myself before. You couldn't hear me. Turns nope. out I unmuted myself. You see that? You see that there, right there? Parking it looks ticket. like a ticket. It's a, it's a ticket. No, it doesn't look like a ticket. It is a ticket. So I, I was at. I was doing women's underwear. That's a bad place. Oh, I heard what he was doing off. women, and he got a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just ad lib. Women's underwear oh, uh, level four. Gene. Gene Simmons. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's hilarious. All that's right, it. Gene. Gene, you're cutting yeah. out really bad. So, so hopefully you get to your destination and have a much better connection. Because <laughs> that was that was the world's most epic fade out right there. All right. Well, thank so, you. Thank uh, you for technology. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, we're not quite there yet where we can do a full fledged podcast uh, while you're driving, sadly. Um, but this uh, there's a question that caught my eye, and this is a great jumping off point for us with Hank. 
Uh, this is in the lead gen description objections group. It's from Brant Graves. It says, how is your whiteboard set up to keep track of listing, uh, listings, appointments, and goals? So Hank, I'm curious kind of what you teach and what you, uh, either what you do for yourself and what you encourage the, the people that are in your world, how, how to track their activity, their production, their, the, the steps to getting to where they want to be. See, you guys are going to laugh about this. 36 deals a year, tracking is easy and we go old school. See, I like yeah. paper. I like things in front of me. So if I have a goal, it's going to be this. The, the, the guy on the airplane was laughing at me because whenever I have a goal, I do a, a, um, a wall CRM on it. For example, I just did a 36 to life and the goal was to get to 96 uh, um, agents in there. We had over 120 and I found out that it's a complete cluster when you have that many people. So destructive mm -hmm. abundance. Here's how I tracked it. I literally spent about an hour doing this little, this square chart so that there was 96 of them when I colored them in. And that's how mm -hmm. simple I took it. See, it's about your subconscious mind and seeing that it's important. So literally I use old school paper and I look at my goals every single day and I hit all my goals. It doesn't need to be electronic. It needs to be in front of you. Keep it simple. Now, will this work if you're doing a team of, you know, like 8,000 people? Probably not. But it's a good, but the part that's the most important there is that you know low tech high tech, but have it in front of you consistently. Like you said, subconscious mind. If you're not looking at it, it's not there. And I love that you used colors. You had a specific number, and you you again and again and again and again. A million dollars in 2018. Right. In 2018, we will gross a million bucks. Literally, here's our business plan. So if you guys can zoom in, you can see it. I mean, guys, so you can have big businesses without a lot of people. I will have my assistant. I will have a um, an intern and my wife. And we are on track where we'll do a million dollars in 2018. Now, now, to be clear, that's not in volume. That's in GCI. That's gross commissions earned. Is that correct? That is in gross income earned. Nice. Love that. Love that. Uh, my, uh, my check's in the mail, right? <laughs> well, guys, what, I, what I'm getting at is, is if you can't fit something on a single page, you're, you're overcomplicating it and, and, and it's too complicated. So with, with my coaching clients, I mean, we've got one page going at any given time because sometimes you get so freaking complicated. You need a, you need a master's degree just to follow what the hell you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. So that's awesome. So one page, that's all you need. Figure it out a way to to put it visually and then keep it in front of your face every day. How, like how and when do you review your, uh, like when do you pull that out? What's your routine for reviewing? Every single day. So every single day when I get in, in, in the office, what I do is I, I go right in the beginning. I use a tool notebook um, and, and it may seem simple, yet I go through, I look at my schedule, I interrogate the crap out of my schedule every single week. And at the end of the month, I say, what did I say yes to that I'm kidding myself on what the results I'm getting out of it? Or what did I choose that was chosen because of significance and not sales? See, a lot of us as sales agents wanna do things that make us feel good, yet it doesn't necessarily um, end to the bottom line. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to look at your schedule and see what you're doing that just makes you feel good and go tell your family that you're doing things that makes you feel good and not making money. So therefore you're bullshitting them that you're actually going to work and you're going to work because you'd rather not spend your free time with them. I had a call with uh, a couple of coaching calls with the, 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 the tank himself and uh, he just summarily pimp slapped me the first call. He goes, Greg, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you doing sales? Are you doing it you know, just to look good? I'm like, uh, <laughs> How can I answer that question? And I know, and I really took it. And that's the question that really stuck with me when, when, when I answered that question and I was truthful about my, to myself, I was just doing it for, for, for showboat and some of the stuff that I was doing. And Hank just went right through that and just poof, smacked me. And, uh, it, but it brought, brought it to my, brought it to my, 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 the forefront of my mind. And I realized where I needed to shift a little bit and what I needed to stop doing at times. And it, it was really powerful. It was really powerful, man. Dude, you, you were not, you were not happy with me. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure our relationship was um, on on a tightrope there. <laughs> <laughs> just a just a little one. <laughs> oh my god! But 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 if you have friends or people in your life that can speak truth to you, and in the relationship stays intact, that's a true relationship. Not versus someone goes, dude, they they say something you don't like, and you're like, fuck you, I'm out. That's not a relationship. That's not something that's going to last. Well, and, the, the, and, the and here's the thing, man. If you truly care about someone, you'll care more about them than you do the relationship. I felt strong about some of the things and I wasn't going to back off of them. And I knew that it would put our relationship in jeopardy if it wasn't strong. Yeah, I care more about you than I do our relationship because chances are 10 years from now, 
we probably won't be in a relationship anyways. So why wouldn't I put you before our relationship? Don't say that to me, man. Well, I'm, huh. hoping I'm wrong. <laughs> you will I'm be wrong. I'll sail off in the sunset with you guys. Yeah, man, <laughs> that, that will happen. All right, so there's two questions, and this is oh, what I want to get into. Give me two seconds things. here. You went back to my routine. I look at my P&L yes. every single day. Okay. Meaning if you're a real estate agent and you don't look at your P&L on a monthly basis and you aren't looking over your numbers, you're a child. You're not a business owner. Mm -hmm. you're, you're faking it. So you know what? If you aren't doing a monthly P&L, guess what? You suck. Yeah. Yeah. I was just <laughs> talking to, uh, to Pasquale this morning, uh, one of my mentors that we've had on the show here before. <clears throat> and he was talking about just how we've been so conditioned to get away from really putting n numbers to anything, but especially our goals and then tracking the numbers and having a relationship with the numbers. Um, partially because of the way, the way we've come out of school and all this stuff, like like 90% of people leave school with the belief system that I am bad at math. Right. And so we shy away from anything that has to do with that. And we really shy away. And I know, I know I have in the past and I'm fixing this. We, we shy away from really putting a solid concrete numerical value on our goals that we hold ourselves accountable to and then staying in relationship with that goal, right? Staying in communication with that goal every day. Well, and I think if we go back to calendar, what if you planned out the next week and then you said, okay, if I continued these activities for the next week, what's it look like from a year from now? And that's how you planned your goals out. Because so many of us plan our goals out and then we try to put it back in our calendar and we create a calendar that will never freaking follow. What if you couldn't set your goals until you did a week of, of schedule that you'll actually follow? That's kind of really a different cool. way of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I talk about a lot is I, I don't I don't I don't have people write a business plan. I have people write a life plan. You know, schedule out. Tell me what your perfect life looks like. Where are you going to work? Who are you going to work with? When are you going to work? You know, how much are you going to work? You know, all of these different aspects that make your life full and healthy, vibrant and, and, and wonderful. And then in those gaps, fill in your business, guys. Fill that <laughs> stuff in because you'll want to do that. I mean, I've done it. And it's, just, it's wonderful. Your, your visual was just. <laughs> uh... <laughs> All right, we can't we can't go too far. All right, let's not go any hole. further. All right, so uh, so let's get back. There was um there was a couple of questions that you asked when you said you interrogate your schedule, and I I love this, and I want to go deeper on this. So number one was what am I saying yes to? And you have some different ways of thinking about that, like you know what am I saying yes to that I'm saying that, that's forcing me to say no to something? Oh, what am I really saying yes to? So go a little bit deeper on that. How do you think of that, and how do you ask yourself that question? Well, one of the things is, is we should have our lives already planned out. So anytime someone asks us to do something, we have to go figure out what we're going to say no to in order to say yes to it. So for example, I do family and work. I don't have any friends, really. I don't have any of that. I focus on family and I focus on work. And those are the, those are the two things that I blow out of the water. So when I go to put something into my schedule, I ask myself, if I say yes to this, what am I saying no to that I already said yes to? And furthermore, what did I say yes to that's really just feeling significance and it's not going to sales? So I think so many times we say, well, I'm going to volunteer on this board because it'll lead to business. Yet, yet that's bull crap. If you're not passionate about something, don't volunteer for something just because um, you think it's going to be good for business. How about you go do things that you're passionate about and business will happen? If you're a human being, people will want to work with you. Agree or disagree? 100%. Yeah. So can I give you an example? I, I work for um, a real estate company and I used to be on their national uh, meeting every single Friday. And I was in front of, you know, two to 300 agents every single Friday. Yet when I interrogated my schedule over two months of doing that every single Friday, what I realized was it was causing me a lot of volunteer work, meaning people were reaching out and wanting, wanting more time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't mind helping other people. Yet when it gets over 10% of my 40 hours, I'm, I'm doing a disservice to my family, meaning I want to do volunteer time for like suicide prevention, not for work stuff. So what I decided to do is I stepped down from that opportunity and I asked myself if I would have spent eight hours, because that was every Friday, if I would have spent had eight one-on-one -on -one appointments, would I have more to show from it for my business? And the answer was absolutely. So I walked away from the significance of being on stage in front of you know two or hundred, two or three hundred people every Friday to talking to eight people and having real relationships come from those eight hours, because that's going to compound than just being up on stage and feeling significance. Wow. 
that's a lot of truth right there. And you know, I I'll, I'm the first one to admit it. You know, I am I am guilty of looking for more significance versus you know looking for more sales. And I the 10 percent is something that I, I just wrote down here, and I got to go look at my calendar and see where I'm if I'm putting more than my 40 hours a week or 50 or 60 hours, whatever you're going to work 70, 80 hours, more than 10 percent. If that's if that's if it's over that then it's, I'm doing it just a disservice to myself. And I can tell you right now, I'm giving more than 10%. I know for a fact I am. And so that's and something I, that I need to And it's not that I'm against that. I, I, here's what I'm against, people kidding themselves on what they're really doing. So if you choose you wanna get 50% of your time to charity, I'm okay with that. Just don't tell yourself that you, you know, you're working 40 or 50 hours, you're working 30 hours and you're volunteering 30 hours. There, there's a big difference, right? Mm-hmm, 100%. Well, you know what? So when it, when it comes to, you know, looking at your life, where could people, you know, start digging some of that stuff out? Because they, they all do it and they feel significant about it. How can they, wh where should they start looking to start the weeding process so their garden can grow? Well, here, here's what I did was I got real clear on what I didn't want. I, I mean, I didn't want somebody else bringing my kids to school in the morning. That was big for me. So I put that into my schedule. I, I got real clear and I didn't want to work nights or weekends. So I, I time blocked that out for the family. And what I got down to was I work nine to five and I've got to get everything done in that nine to five because it's easy for me because let's face it, I love working. It's easy for me to work. And if you're watching this, chances are you'd rather work than go home and deal with your family. And, and some of you guys will be like, oh, no, yet consciously, I love my family. So I set up parameters where I can't just work all the time because I could easily justify it. You know, hey, I got to get this yeah. done in order to pay for private school. I got to get this done to pay for our brand new home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all it is is a bunch of excuses that you don't want to be focused and efficient. So what you do is you have your ones that are important to you suffer. It's like, I got to take this because we got bills to pay. No, fuck you. You get efficient and you do what you need to do between nine and five and the hours that you said you work and show up for your family and actually be a good spouse and a good husband or a good father. Hmm. So, okay. So basically, like when you think about it, like if you work with a new agent, uh, an agent that's new to your world, not, not new to the business, you kind of start with essentially, do you start with a blank slate as a schedule and then kind of start with the things that, um, that are time blocked as part of their life plan, then figure well, out what work hours you have to work with? Or do you start with what they've got going on and start weeding out from there? Well, I, I start with where they're at and where they want to be. And, and I start with what reality is and, and do they have the luxury of, of doing what they do? So I ask a lot of questions and it usually takes me two or three phone calls to cut through the bullshit to find out what's really going on. Because really? typically once I talk with people, them reaching what their ultimate goal is, is much easier. It's like, you know, if they have kids, they always say, oh, my kids are my big why. Oh, really? Because your schedule shows something different. You know, or and, and so many times people are so in in they're not in balance with what they say they want to do. And then when you call them out on it, they realize that what they want is already right there in front of them. They're just, you know, putting up some facade as to why they can't do it. Why do people do that? I mean, what, what, what subconsciously are we doing? Why do we tell ourselves these lies and then execute on them and then feel good about lying to ourselves? Why do we do that? I, I'll tell you why I'm prone to do it. You know, I was I was just at a conference and gosh, it was, I mean, everywhere. Hey, gang the tag. I mean, people love me. And then I come home and my, you know, my kids are like, hey, could you take care of the dishes, please? And it, and so through work, I get a ton of significance. So it's easy to blow off the things that we say are important to us. I mean, it's a lot of freaking work to be a spouse or a husband or a dad. And and so it's easy to default what fills us instant significance, where it's not as easy to be a dad. Meaning sometimes your big win is having your kid actually talk to you for the day. And so I think that people do it because uh, it's much easier to go to work than it is to do what's important to them. Default to the pleasure, not to, to, to the reality. So it's like, hey, I'm getting all this, you know, accolades here. But when I go home, my wife, you know, she's pissed at me from the last conversation. She doesn't talk to me for half a day. And my kids are out doing the sports and I'm all by myself. Fuck this. I'm just going to go back to work. I feel better there. But then your relationships and your, in your home life suffer even more because you go back to where it's pleasurable. When in reality, you need to buck up buttercup. And you need to have those tough conversations. I'm sorry, honey. I was my fault. My apologies. Make an effort like you do. You're phenomenal with your kids. You know, you and your wife go to you know counseling every week. You actively work on your relationship, which is so powerful because if you're if you if you're suffering on either your home on your home side your business is going to suffer yeah but and i mean most, most of my coaching clients it's funny 
Um, you guys, you've had a bunch of them on, on the call and half the time I'm like, well, how much money you got in your operating account? Great. How much you got in your checking account? Great. All right, perfect. And we don't, we don't even really talk real estate because the reality is, is if you have things figured out and you got your schedule figured out and you follow your schedule, I mean, results are pretty predictable. Yet most people don't want to have a schedule because they don't want to be tied down. You know what? When you have a schedule, it'll give you flexibility. Now, now let me just ask this question. Greg, how long has it been since you've not used digital signatures in your business? Oh, God, we, it's, we've used them for shit forever. I mean, years. Can you imagine not using digital signatures? I remember not using digital signatures, and that was so time-consuming. I mean, it was a brutal task. So you mark my word, within the next five years, time trade or a scheduler like that will be the next digital signature. Doing Zoom calls like this with your clients will be the next digital signatures. There's so much time wasted in real estate going from point A to point B, or you know, taking a phone call when you're not really prepared for that phone call or trying to chase people down. For example, some of my clients are no longer answering their phone. I don't answer my phone anymore. Meaning on my voicemail, it says, this is my cell phone and I typically don't answer incoming calls. Why? Because if I follow my schedule, I'll get predictable results and my real relationships know how to get a hold of me. Matt, if you want to get a hold of me, do you email me, call me, or instant message me? Um, I, <laughs> I instant message you on Facebook to request yep. that we set up a scheduled call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's just it because that's the only thing that I monitor myself. My assistant does my email, my voicemail. Everybody just knows that I won't answer my cell phone unless we have a scheduled appointment. And what do you think my results are when, when I just follow my schedule? See, most real estate agents come from scarcity. So they're like, oh my gosh, they're going to take this call. It's going to fall out. No, no freaking deal is going to die if you wait two hours to call people back. In fact, they probably figured out the problem because you know they, they want to be firefighters. And so the number one thing I want you to do for 2018 is figure out your schedule and then make the pain of not following it greater than the pain of following it. Because I guarantee you, you follow your schedule, you'll get predictable results and, and you'll have your best year ever. All right. Well, let's talk about that as far as why people don't follow their schedule, right? So let's assume that you actually do come up with a schedule that you, you really feel like, and, and once you put that schedule down and you, and you look at it and go, okay, th this really is going to get me to my goals in five years if I continue on this path. And it's not unrealistic. It's not a 12 hour a day, back to back 15 minute calls. You know, like it's a, it's a schedule that's executable. Let's talk about why people don't stick even with, even with a schedule that is executable that will get them where they say they wanna be. Number one reason, they don't know their numbers. So they turn into whores. They think they got to work with anybody and everybody because they don't know their numbers and they never know when enough is enough. And, and they, they just keep on taking on more deals. I mean, that's why I'm a big fan of 36 deals per year because 36 deals a year is manageable. You don't have that ups and downs. So if you have more than three deals closing in a month, what you do is raise your standards. So many people are afraid to raise their standards because it'll push people away. Greg, you and I didn't work together because of my standards. And it wasn't that I don't love you. It's just the fact that with, with what my standards are for a coaching client, we weren't on the same wavelength. So I turned you down. And, and, it, and it wasn't because I didn't want to coach you. I absolutely wanted to coach you, yet I didn't believe we could get you where you wanted to go on the game plan that we we're doing. So, so I just said no. And so people are so afraid of saying no to people and losing the relationship. Greg, did we lose a relationship by me saying, no, I won't work with you? Oh, I wanted to slap you for about a week, but besides that, you know, we, it, you know, it, it, it didn't destroy the relationship. It, it, in all honesty, I did not like you, but I, but I did, res <laughs> but I, but I did respect you, and that's the difference. How much and more pissed would you have been at me if we worked together for the next, you know, nine months? I took nine thousand bucks of your money, and then you weren't at your goal. Pretty pissed. Pretty pissed. Yeah, and then, then it would have been like, what, what the hell? And, and now think about that. How dumb was it? So most people wouldn't have had the balls to do that because they would have thought Greg's, you know, he's got 70,000 downloads a month and like 18,000 people watching every single show. That could have been great press. Yet, in my opinion, it's like taking a listing where people drive by the sign and it just doesn't hit. Now, here's the thing is, I know Greg's going to be successful. We just didn't agree on the format that he was going to do it. And because I wasn't all in on the on the format and the game plan, I it would not have been right for me to to sign on board doesn't mean that Greg's not going to hit his goals. I just, we didn't agree on the game plan. Therefore, mm -hmm. I couldn't buy into it. Yeah, Greg, unmute. Trying, 
Okay. I'm trying to you, you yell at me when I'm muted. You yell at me when I'm not muted. Johnson, it feels like a marriage. God, I'm always wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean, but it, it, just because the the, the, the the game plan wasn't aligned, I agree with you. You know, I, I'm willing to be coached in a different direction. And you and I have had you know multiple off the book conversations about you know where we're going, you know, as a group. You know, the three of us and a bunch of other folks. And that gets me going and gets you going. It gets Matt going. And it gets, so we're all in the same boat together, going the same direction. Not me swimming upstream and you going downstream going, see a fucker. You know, you're going the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and here's the thing is think about what that does for us moving forward. If we choose to do something else together, we know that there's a trust and there's, you know, we both believe that we can get there. It makes it much easier to buy into it and, and, and go do the next thing. Mm -hmm. It really, really yeah. does. And that's, that's what I said. I wanted to slap you, but I respected your decision because it, you weren't just going with the flow. You weren't being like every other coach going, Hey man, I'll do whatever the hell you want. Just give me that thousand bucks. Give me that thousand bucks. You're like, no, I will forgo because I can't do what you want me to do in the way you want it to be done. And I know where and how to get you there, but you don't want to do that. So bon voyage, amigo. Well, we okay. did three or four, three or four coaching calls before we got to that point, because I, here's, here's what I want you guys to do as agents. Slow down. Meaning if you go to a listing and you, it doesn't feel right, slow down and, and, and then go back. Because one of, the worst things, one of the worst things that you can do for your business is take business that doesn't fit you or can get the results that you want. Think about this. If you sold every single listing you ever took and you worked with people that you loved, and think about the referral business that you're going to get if you had those sort of results. Abounding yeah. referrals, abounding yeah. referrals. I mean, that's, that's why we'll hit a million bucks next year is, is, is because we've done such a great job uh, choosing the right coaching clients. And then when people aren't the right fit, we get them out. I mean, I've issued, I don't know, I bet you I issue 60, 10% refunds because I want to push people away real quick if it's not a good fit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people need to do that in their teams as well. I mean, shit, guys. If, let's get real. Let's get real nasty. If your if your inner if your personal relationship isn't a good fit, cut it off, end it because you are past. Like Hank always says, what are you saying yes to when you're saying no to something else? So if you're in a horrible personal relationship, he or she that's driving you batshit crazy, dude, say, hey, look, this is just isn't a fit anymore. You're a great human, just not a great human for me. Peace. I'm out. And then you go meet this smoking hot chick at the gym. Okay. Bonus. <laughs> that took a very, very definite turn. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> All right. So, so we've talked well, can about. Can we go back to schedule real quick? Yeah, I was just about so, to take you there back there. Let's say that let's say that you want to do 36 listings in a year. So that means that you got to have at least 36 listings in your schedule. And and what I what I say is have two listing appointments a week. That, that are in there. And if you don't have a listing appointment, then what you're doing is you are lead attracting during that time. And, and you know, so, it, or you are practicing your listing presentation or your buyer presentation. So you have if then statements. If I don't have a listing in this time slot, then I do this to help bring in listings. And, and if people say, hey, I wanna meet you on Saturday afternoon and Johnny has a soccer game and that's important to you to go to Johnny's soccer game, guess what? You don't go on that listing appointment. And people will be like, no way, that's easy money. Well, the reality is, is if you're really good and people want you, they'll adjust their schedule. And, and, and I'm a firm believer in that. There's enough agents out there that will be led around yet. Think about setting up the relationship when, when, when they're out negotiating you on your schedule. Think about what <laughs> precedence that's setting on how good of a negotiator you're going to be on their behalf. Yeah, oh, that is so funny. true. So true. And, 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 and yeah. you know, in, in real estate, I think it's almost one of the only businesses where, like Hank said, we, we get led around. You don't treat it like a true okay. business. You don't set up and get training. You don't have certain things you at certain times. And you know what? If someone has, you know, if someone wants to meet you on that Saturday afternoon, dude, just tell them straight up. I got an appointment. That's I got an appointment already. I can't do it then, but I can do it Monday at four. Oh, OK, we can make that work. It ha I've done it time and time again because like I, I honestly do not work on the weekends unless it's an absolute emergency or if the clients are in a dire straits and they have to get the home sold or buy a house or whatever. It's but by exception. Work. It's not by norm. Exa mm -hmm. By exception. Absolutely. Now, and now fun. here's where the argument comes in. They said, well, that's easy. You got abundance. No, I have abundance because I follow my freaking schedule and I'm not a little kid that just does whatever I want. I follow my schedule when I don't want to. 
when it when my schedule tells me to do something, I do it. I mean, I don't have to think anymore because I've done all the thinking with my time trade and, and everything that I have set up. So when somebody wants an appointment with me, I send them the appropriate time trade and they can either find an appointment or they can't. And 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 you know what? Sometimes there's times where people say, Well, you're out three weeks. And I'm like, I guess we don't work together. You know what? That that's very <laughs> true. When I was doing my my McDaniel challenge, I was booked out over a year in advance. People are like, Well, can you get in time sooner? I'm like, No. <laughs> I'm not gonna add you in on a normal day at two o'clock in the afternoon because it's fucking convenient for your ass. No. <laughs> this is the time you fit in the slot. You don't want to fit in the slot? Later, homie. Yeah. <laughs> but it does it does go back to that. I mean, hey, it goes back to the scarcity mentality. It's the same reason people take clients that aren't ideal for them. It's the same reason they work with buyers when they'd really be rather working with sellers. It's the same reason they work with people outside their age group or first time home buyers when they don't really like them. I mean, it's it's all part of the so same can thing. I give a trigger there? Yeah, you know when you're taking a listing that won't sell. And when you turn that listing that doesn't sell, you figure out how much time you would have spent with that listing. And then I want you to put it in your schedule. So somebody's going to take that and you're going to watch it. And, and I figure if you take a listing, it's going to take an hour a week, give or take, right? So if you took an hour a week instead of taking that listing and you went and poured into your sphere of influence, your A's, you know, your top 36 people, and you did that every single week for an hour until that listing sold, I guarantee you, you re will replace that piece of crap listing with business with people that you want to work with. That's the, that's the thing that people don't understand. You can choose who you work with. Reject asshole clients because you're, if you're sitting there and a client is sitting there just belittling you, second guessing you, you know, just being a dick, well then that's, that you are taking that into your energy system, into your psyche, and then that has to be pushed out somewhere. It might be on your wife or your husband or your kids or just on your mental, you know, your, yourself mentally. Work with people that you want to work with. And if you don't like them, dude, fire them. It is the most liberating feeling you will ever feel in your business career. It's just being, you know what, Hank? I don't think we're a right fit together, and I think you should go work with Bob from Bob from Remax. He's a real douche. So are you. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's the thing: is 75% of the time when I would let clients go in real estate, I would rehire them under new circumstances. And what I mean by that is it needs a recalibration and saying, hey, you know what? It's not okay that you call me every single night after five o'clock. I get that you're nervous, yet that's my family time. And if we were going to work together, you will call me between nine and five with this kind of stuff. If we're negotiating contract, that's different, yet you will not contact me after five o'clock for something that can be handled during business hours. Limits. Yeah, it's great. You guys have kids. You, you, you put your kids with limits, put your clients with limits. Yep. They, are, they are not the Christ coming the second time, okay? They are, just, <laughs> they are just a client, and you need to treat them like Hank says. you are got to treat them like a kid. Treat them like a kid. Yeah. All right. Let's get back, get back getting back to interrogating your schedule and doing <clears throat> doing the thought ahead of time so that when you get up in the morning, like you know exactly what you're going to do. Yep. Right. So lead me through a little bit more on on how you interrogate your schedule. So we've gone through a couple of questions, you know, sales over significance. What am I saying yes to that's causing me to say no to something I've already said yes to? Um, I, I want to kind of go a little bit deeper on that because that that's something that even, you know, I mean, Greg, you and I struggle with this sometimes, and, and you and I are both what anybody else uh, would call pretty militant about our calendars, right? Uh, but you and I still struggle with this, right? So, Hank, go a little bit deeper on that for me. So, I, you know, the, the first one that comes to mind is I've, I've got a good friend, and his name's Scott, and he asked me to go somewhere for the day. And, and this would have been pretty, a pretty good opportunity to speak, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I asked myself, okay, who's affected by me saying yes to him because I would have had to cancel some appointments I already had? Or if I cancel those appointments, is that the highest and best use of my time spending that whole day doing that one thing? And I think so many times we, we don't realize that we're not using our time for the highest and best use. And when we do, when we do say yes to something, what else could we have said yes to? versus saying yes to that. See, oftentimes we say yes to other people's to-do list and we don't, we don't say yes to our own to-do list. And again, guys, there's, there's downsides to this. I don't have friends. My friends are the people that I work with, like you guys. I say yeah. that I'm off the clock because I fit you into the schedule, not because I couldn't put a, another client in there, because I consider you guys ripplers and you guys are the ones that will have the bigger, the bigger impact on the industry. So I said, yes, even though I could have had a $1,000 client in this, in this spot, right? Mm -hmm. 
So it's it's really I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> no, you are, you no you are you're prioritizing. You know yeah. you're 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 prioritizing for your best interests, not for whatever so your your wife or your friends or your coaching clients' best interests. You're like, dude, this is me, mine. This is the youngest I'm ever going to be, the oldest I'll ever be, all simultaneously at the at the same exact moment. What's best for me at this at this very second? I'm going to get well, on the hang out with my buddies. It because my family and I have sat down and we said, here's our goals. Here's what we'd like life to look like. And so I set up my work schedule to reflect that. And anytime I don't follow my work schedule or I say yes to something that isn't going to get us the results, it's like I'm lying to my family. So, uh, you know, I, I think that what you should be able to do is go home and show your family your schedule and, and show them how on purpose you were or not on purpose. You know, I'll show my cats and they they are going to be on point. We're going to sit down and have a family <laughs> meeting. Whiskers is all going to be all around. We'll get a little crazy, get a little catnip up in there, and we'll get, we'll get that calendar booked out solid. <laughs> yeah, but we were talking about this the other day, Greg, in relation to our business, just that, you know, we've, as much as we approach other things like a business, we haven't even pro approached the back end of our podcast as much like a business as we should have, you know, it's so the, like this, this can easily spill over into areas of your life that you don't think about. Like it's, it's like it, it takes, it is a mental effort to apply this mentality because it doesn't, at least until it becomes natural. Well, but Matt, if it doesn't become natural. Here's where we gotta be careful too because everything that I say yes to, I look at my main thing, my family and my business, and I look at it as a chain. And I ask myself, if I say yes to this, does it naturally latch onto the chain where, where it doesn't completely derail with where I'm going? Now, because when we say yes to doing something for an hour, it's typically not just that hour. It's the mm -hmm. brain space leading up to it. It's preparing for it. It's where you could be spending that brain space thinking about something else. And I think so many times we have different things that aren't, you know, attached to that one main thing where they're bunny trails. And we don't realize how much yeah. compounding interest we lose out on when we say yes to things that aren't in alignment with family or work or your main things because they're bunny trails that don't lead to the, the domino run. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's one of the things that um... – that I loved about, I wish I could remember offhand which book this was in, although he might have talked about it in multiple ones. Dan Kennedy talked about the um, kind of the the virtuous cycle and how like everything that he did kind of like he limited himself so that the things that he did, even though they might be seemingly disparate, all reinforced each other, right? Yep. It's the same reason why, you know, I would say more than half of my podcast clients are in real estate. Right. Well, and just, how many of you guys ever heard of Shark Tank? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. So I got to meet with uh, Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank and great guy. And, and I asked him a question that kind of rocked him on his access a little bit. And he wanted to be in business together. In fact, he wanted me to come down to his home the day before Christmas Eve and spend a full day with him. Now, talk about, I mean, that from an ego standpoint, I mean, I was thinking about hey, I, all the stuff that could come from that. Yet the reality was, was it was a completely different business. And, and it wasn't in line with my one thing, which was family and my real estate coaching. And I ended up saying no and not even going down there because I knew it was just a shiny object that would, even if we could have made a million bucks on it, I've been doing real estate since 1998 and it wasn't in line with my, my greater goal. Therefore, it would have derailed what we're having now. And I think it would have been a short-term gain for a long-term loss. Interesting. That takes a lot of balls to, to, to shoot that down. I mean, that's, I mean, I that's shot down a, a shark from focus. Shark Tank. Yeah. <laughs> I that's, mean, <laughs> that's big. That's not small. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I think there's a good reality of, I mean, people, the, the success that I'm having is because I've been very purposeful on saying no to things that would have been significant, yet it would have derailed me from my passion. And, and guys, if you aren't passionate about what you're doing and you're doing it just for money, guess what? At some point, you're going to fall short because it, 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 if you're not passionate about what you're doing, go do something different. Yeah, I, you know, I love, who was it? Was Steve Jobs or was it? I think it was Steve Jobs that said, "If I do something, you know, enough days in a row and I don't like doing it, I'm going to change what I do." You yeah. know, and come on, he created a couple of the largest companies in the world. I think he might be onto something. Hank's going to make a million dollars next year because next year, he shot down a, a shark because you have that laser focus, the one thing by Gary Keller. You can have a ton of things going, but they better be leading to one specific goal. I mean, my goal that I repeat to myself is I want to have the number one largest podcast in the world that helps, you know, entertains, educates, and inspires people to live the life of their dreams. And my annual income is going to be $50 million. I know exactly where I'm going. And then there's a lot of different 
portals and funnels that are going to get me there, but I know where I'm going. Yet here's I the want- thing is your subconscious is supporting that. And if you guys watch this, you can tell he's not just saying that. That's something he said over and over and over again. So you ask yourself, hey, is this next choice going to be bringing me closer to that or further away? And it comes down to all these little choices that you make. It's not these big decisions. It's these little decisions that you make over and over and over and over again. I cannot, I cannot emphasize the compounding effect of making a decision. Should I have the beer? Not have the beer. Have the cake? Not have the cake. Go for the run? Not go for the run. You know, go on the date? Not go on the date. All these little things, guys, are going to take you to a destination. It's going to, you need to be clear on where that destination is. Because if you're out there just floating around with no goals and no dreams, no, no decisive, you know, goal, uh, uh, path you're on, you're a boat in full, in full, you know, full engines going with no rudder. You're going to go around, you're going to bump into shit, and then you're going to end up somewhere, but you're not going to end up where you ultimately want to be. And you're going to be like, how did I get here? It's because you didn't. And be have careful a with it just being about the destination and enjoy the journey. I mean, that's one reason I cracked a beer was. You know, I enjoy the journey. I don't have pressure from on some other outside force, me being someone that I'm not. You know, I was up on stage at a national company and I was in shorts, this hat backwards and th- this coat. Why? Because that's who I'm choosing to show up as, is myself. And if you don't like it, that's okay. I don't have to speak on your stage. Yeah, I'm 100%. That's <laughs> it, uh, being authentic to you. I mean, right now I got my dress shirt on, which you guys can see, but then I have jeans with a tear in them, wearing my Vans tennis shoes, doing my thing. I'm comfortable as me. And that's one of the things when, when you make, when you give yourself the ability to have that freedom, people will be drawn to you like a moth to light because they feel the authenticity. And we're so full of bullshit. Bullshit. 99% <laughs> of our lives because the media, your friends, your family say, be like this, do this, buy that, go here and all, everything else. When you're like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll fit it into your mold. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll go be friends with these people. But in reality, you're like that guy's a fucking asshole and this car sucks. No, I don't want to buy this car, but my, all my friends say I have to. You know, it's, I mean, w- I mean, Hank, what's one of the biggest things that, like, um, when you when you had a realization of, like, you know what, I'm going to be me, and if you don't like it, that's fine, but I'm going to go my own path. W- I bet you anything, you had zero negative feedback, or if the people did give you negative feedback, they were jealous of you, weren't they? You know, uh, when, I, when I made the jump, because I made a pretty big jump from a dream job, and what it did was it exposed to the real people were in my life. You know, it's amazing how many fake relationships were out there. And, you know, there's been some true relationships where even though it didn't serve them anymore, they were excited because I was going after what I wanted for my family and they supported me. And and what it did was it really exposed who was your true friends and who were the MFers. Yeah. Well, I don't, what, what's MF short for? <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Isn't that great? Uh, Clients, I, I said, we don't allow MFers in our in our classes. So somebody sent this to me when they saw it. And, uh, you know, my, my clients appreciate me. I tell them how it is. They might not always hear what they want to hear yet. I'll never say anything with any intentions other than wanting what's best for you. You know, I was Love talking it. to another guy that uh, he was a real estate agent and he he's a social media guy, really cool a guy named James. Um, and he has a no douchebag rule. So any of his clients, if, he, if any of them are douchebags, he, he fires them immediately. Like no MFers, no douchebags. Pick a term that works for you guys and stick to it. Have some fun with it and keep that in your mind. You're sitting there at the dining room table and this guy's trying to outshine you the entire time. Be like, all right, douchebag. Thanks for your time. It's been great. Best of all the luck. Bye-bye. <laughs> the best script for that is, should we just should we just stand up and put it out on the table and seize? <laughs> Never mind. All right, keep going. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I think there's, there needs to be an ejection seat for this conversation. All right. One thing I do want to get back to before we uh, close things out is uh, is the role of really setting uh, numbers to your goals, Hank. That's one of the things that I've always liked and, and noticed about you. But talk a little bit about kind of your approach to it, why that's so important that you have those the numbers set to the goals. Uh, and at what point do you start kind of evaluating whether you're on track or not on track? Well, so I, I interrogate my schedule each and every month. And, and when I look at my goals, I ask myself, it, are my activities going to drive my goals or do I need to adjust my goals or do, do I need to adjust my activities? So I'm constantly looking at if, if what I'm putting into my schedule is going to give me predictable results. And if I'm not, then am I willing to adjust my schedule? So, for example, I'm making moves in my schedule right now where where I've got to – I'm. I'm only going to be in the business the first quarter of 2018, three days a week. 
The other two days I'm working on the business um, in, in, in another one of my buckets. Now, if you think about it, I mean, it could be easy for me to, to look short term and bring on 18 more coaching clients. I mean, I get $1,000 for each coaching client. Yet I'm willing to step back and free up 18 spots on Thursday and Friday to work on the business so that we're, we're looking at the bigger, longer term picture so I can take better care of my clients and not just be this sweatshop where it's more and more and more and more and more because at some point customer service falls off. I mean, it, and, and that's where I think people don't realize is how much it hurts you when your customer service falls. And that's one reason I don't answer incoming calls. I take care of my clients. My clients, if they ever reach out to me, they get me. Meaning if they need a call, they can get a call with me within usually an hour or two. And it's because I'm not busy going out and getting new business. I'm taking care of my clients. And if I ever need, if I ever need more business, I mean, Matt, if I called you up right now and said, hey, hey, I got, a, I got one spot open in my one-on-one -on -one schedule. Who do you think it should be with? Chances are I could probably get a client like that. Yeah. Listings yeah. and buyers are no different. If you really take care of your clients and you call somebody up and say, hey, here's what I'm looking for. Who do you know? They'll, they'll go find it for you. Hmm. Interesting. I like that a lot, though. I really do like that a lot, you know, because I've talked a lot about in, in your business and on your business. There is a distinctive difference, guys. In your business is going out, doing the calls, doing the doors, doing the networking, you know, negotiating contracts, showing buyers, going to listing appointments, being on the business's education, watching this podcast, reading a book, going to a seminar, you know, you know, connecting with someone like Hank, you know, and getting a coach. I mean, that's on the business. And that's the most important thing. People don't really spend a lot of time doing that because like, oh, I got to get that next listing appointment. Well, what if you could do it? two times, five times, 10 times easier, smarter, faster, cheaper, if you found a new technique, a new tool, a new partnership, a new referral funnel, if you just spent the time building on the business. I mean, it's, it's mad time much money you've lost by not working on the business, just working in the business. It, it you know, compounds I, very quickly. I look at my net income and how much more money I make with the less hours I spend in the business. Meaning when, it, when, and when I'm working five days a week or six days or, you know, most of my life, seven days a week in the business, my net was nowhere near what it is now because I'm cutting out the 80% that makes 20% of the money and I'm increasing the 20% that makes 80% of the money. So the 80-20 rule it doesn't apply to me because I say no to the 80% that uh, makes 20% of the money. Mm -hmm. I look like I confused you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it. <laughs> I was just thinking, no, I, I, my, my wheels are spinning just in terms of like the practical implications of this. And yeah, anyway, that's, yeah, that's, that's where my mind went. So anyway, um, Monica says, Hank's honest and authentic, authentic approach to coaching has changed my world. Uh, he has an incredible way of drawing the truth out of you. That is a hundred percent true. Uh, Monica has been a guest on the show before and she's kind of, she's in your world. Oh, is that Monica Weekly? World. Yeah. West Monica Weekly. Yeah. yeah. Go follow her. She is, yeah. I've, yeah. Anyway, yeah, my, and here's the cool thing about my coaching clients is they multiple, they're multiplication for me. So if I take a coaching client, that's not the right fit. It doesn't multiply. Monica has probably taught me way more than I've taught her. Um, I mean, she's freaking brilliant and I can't wait. She, you guys watch Monica. What's going to happen is she's going to skyrocket. And then what she's going to be able to do is reach down and give me a hand up because I mean, she's talent. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very cool. Greg. No, I'm, 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 I'm listening. I love coach Monica. She was absolutely fantastic. And I am agreeing with Hank hundred uh, percent. Go follow her. Listen to that woman. She is not a dummy. She is very much a smart cookie. Yeah. And, and Hank, I love your approach. And the, the thing that's unique about, let's say real estate versus say a startup uh, is we know what produces results. We know what the 20% is. You know, there's, there's a lot of businesses out there that you could be into where you don't really know what the 20% is right? Yeah. You, you don't know what you, you don't know. To, you, to, you don't know what you don't know. You have to throw a lot of, a lot of mud against the wall to see what sticks to even figure out what the 20% is. And because you're in real estate and you know what the, what the predictable results are, you already know going in, Hey, I, I, there's activities that I already know that are proven for the last 40 years that they produce results. Yep. And, uh, and, and we have, we have that in real estate. So why not focus on those things? We already know what the vital few are. You know, what's interesting is you get into coaching and you made the transition from from selling real estate where you have predictable results, but you were able to go into coaching, which is a completely different business model. It's it's selling information and performance improvement to business professionals. That's a completely different here's, thing. Here's can I can I draw a parallel there? Yeah. 
I have 22 teams across the nation that I'm on the board of directors of. So I look at, even though I'm a coach, I look at that I've got, because I have 22 one-on-one clients that I work with. I look at those businesses are just an extension of me. So, so really, I look at it as I'm just in a different role than what most people are. And I'd argue that I am in the day-to-day business. I'm just seven, you know, sixth level where I'm running it and I'm not going out on the appointments. You know, the majority mm-hmm. of my coaching clients right now that have been with me for over a year, they're having their best year ever. The, going into the fourth quarter, all the money that they make is extra and bonus. And yet they're working less than they've ever worked in their life. And Mm -hmm. so some people will say, well, you're not in production. I'd call BS. I'm in Mm -hmm. production. I'm just not out there going on the appointments. Interesting perspective. All right. What is true, though? I mean, because your knowledge, your advice, your techniques are what they're putting into action. So if you if you don't provide that, you don't provide them, you know, what they need, then, yeah, you are in production. You're producing results. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Big results. results. Yeah, (laughs) No, that is true. All right, cool guys. Well, we're coming to the end of our time with uh, with Hank. Sadly, uh, he needs to finish that beer and get on Look with his family this. and friends. Like I right. nursed it, like it's got a nipple yeah, on it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way you drink beer. You know, I thought it'd be cool to have a beer. Yet the reality is, these are conversations that I love. And 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 guys, look at the conversations that you're having. We were just at at the um, at a conference, and and you know, at nine o'clock, I was ready to go to bed because I don't do drunk talk very well. I'd rather get up at five o'clock and have a real conversation that's going to impact me and have a difference five years from now than talk about surface level shit. I mean, I don't, I don't do that very well. And that's a compounding effect too. You know, my goal is to have one powerful conversation a day with another human being that will cause them to think about that conversation five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 days away from now, or, you know, five years from now where they can say, I remember when I had this conversation with Hank, those are the type of conversations that that multiply. And if you're a real estate agent, focus on having one powerful conversation a day where people will forever remember you and you'll impact their life. That's really good. Well, I know the day that I talked to you and you bitch slapped me. You, know, that, that, <laughs> you still think about that. I still think and about a, that. Uh, there's a good question from uh, from Benji Lee. It says, yo, Hank, what does the nine to five look like? I think if I remember right, Hank, we covered this on your last uh, episode with us where you kind of did go into like the 50, 25, 25 and one uh, yep. and a little bit on your schedule. So Benji, go back and find that uh, Hank's previous episode on Real Estate Uncensored where we have covered kind of what your what you recommend to your clients for lead generation and appointments and stuff like that. And if you guys want, I can send this to to Matt and Greg. It's my, it's my database hack. Um, mm-hmm. I'm tired of dealing with funnels and all that crap. Um, and so the reality is, is if you guys want this, I'll send it to you and you guys can do what you want with it. Um, and, and I truly think it's the difference between a database and a human base. And if you're truly a human, you don't need a CRM because you're working with real relationships that you care about. And, and it's not about a drip campaign. It's about being a human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Yes, we would idea. appreciate it. Send it to us immediately, please. Okay, um, yes. All right, guys. Cool. Uh, and then just uh, just email Greg or message Greg to get a copy of that. <laughs> Greg, that's what like, I have to say about that. <laughs> you, bunch hey, of you, yeah, I'm the one with the true heart <laughs> heart of gold, Mr. Heart of Coal. Uh, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would love to have a conversation with anybody who wants to have a conversation with me. Johnson. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you would. All right, uh, guys. Um, that's going to just about do it. So uh, – so first of all, I know for you, Hank, that the best place for people to connect with you is on Facebook, right? Now, is that your personal profile or the Coach uh, Hank page? You know what? I just hit the 5,000 friend limit again, even though I've deleted over 1,000 people this year. And, it, mm-hmm. and I, it, real quick to a point, you know, don't hang on to relationships that don't need to be there. You know, delete and upgrade. And so if people want to reach out to me, check me out, you know, follow me on Facebook and then, and then read what people respond. You can't fake social proof. I mean, you'll see that there's some people getting some real results, getting some real cool stuff on what I'm throwing down. And if you're interested, you know, reach out and we'll show you the options to work with us. I mean, I I truly believe it, guys. Hank is is one of the best I've ever seen. And I've been in this business a long time. There's a lot of snake oil men and women out there. They'll sell you a quick fix of something or they say it's a quick fix. But, you know, 36 to life or whatever else you want to talk with Hank about. This is about being genuine, working hard but also having a life. And I don't see how that can go wrong ever in a business or personal lives. Nope. So 
Yeah, not not one bit. Hey, speaking of which, we need all three of us need to actually get together in person. It, Greg, we've never actually met, have we? Oh, we have not, my brother from another mother. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know if you're as When's, tall as you look. When, uh, when is so, the next event at your house? Um, it is November third. And is that is, is that the so you want to be a coach? So you want to be a coach? Okay, we need to get into that. Do you have your twelve nights of the round table filled for that one already? You know what? I am verbally sold out. However, I don't have payment for three people. I don't know if they're talking to their spouse. I just sent it out. Yet, if you guys wanted in, I would take you in and I would give you a twofer. Two. Ooh, all right. <laughs> that sounds like a good Friday <laughs> night. <I'm flat. laughs> all right. Okay. So for us, uh, same thing for us. Follow us on Facebook. Check us out. Um, connect with us there. And then, guys, we just um, we just created a whole video, like a free video series on how exactly to do Facebook Lives to nurture that human base, that inner circle of people who know, like, and trust you and uncover the people that have a need for what you do, boost your credibility online. Uh, that is all at rockstarsocialmediakit.com, rockstarsocialmediakit.com. So check that out. All the videos there are free. And as a special bonus, we've included some of our favorite clips about different social media sites from our previous guests so that you can pick out the social media network that's right for you. So we've got people, uh, guest stars that have talked about uh, Twitter, Instagram, and um, I'm forgetting one, uh, Snapchat. So we've got all of our videos on that for the bonuses on that free video series. So check that out, guys. Greg, you want to take us home? Oh, and then and EXP Realty. <laughs> just, I'm just laughing at the Hank, just like blatant. Just like, hello! Literally a sign. I love it. That's is right. that a shameless plug? And that is about as shameless as it gets. Hey, That's awesome. Know, though, the reality is, is if you're a real estate agent, you should check out EXP Realty. And I'm mm -hmm. saying this because um, I truly believe it's where the future of real estate is going. Uh, yeah. We're disrupting the real estate industry and I could pick any real estate company to be associated with. And me as a coach, being associated with a brand hurts my coaching business, meaning mm -hmm. Remax isn't going to have me up on stage when I'm affiliated with EXP. So if you're looking at what I believe is going to be the next big thing, check out EXP. And um, yeah, so if I wasn't allowed to do that, sorry. Sometimes I break the rule. No, it's a, yeah, like like we're gonna say anything about that. I think, although I I do have to point out, the blue goes very nicely with the whole orange of uh, of thirty six to life. So it's a very nice <laughs> it's a very nice color coordination you got. Was it coincidence or was this the master plan all along? Who knows? It's destiny, <laughs> destiny, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right Greg all right. let's put a button no, let's put a little, little bow on this one and send it home all right you guys hey thanks for watching again share this with uh friends or family or co-workers brokerages anybody that needs to hear something like this the honesty that the the tank the tank brought today go check him out go check out exp if you guys are looking for new stuff please go on to itunes and leave us a five-star review uh, so our podcast gets served up to more people so we can help more folks you know, along their journey in real estate but as always matt and i do this because our hearts are truly in and we love you guys we love what where, where, where you guys are going we love the knowledge seekers you know and, and that's you if you're listening to my voice you're a knowledge seeker so congratulations our hearts our minds and everything are, are going to you to make you a better agent and hank i know he has the same heart as well and he drinks rockstar um all right guys sponsors like when you put that stuff out there <laughs> are, you, are you a rock star endorsed athlete, Hank? One day. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. All right, you guys. Until our next show, peace out, ninjas. We go.